It says Gamete Theory, but it should be Game Theory, aka one of the most important videos I think that I've ever seen. So I guess we're just gonna watch this video now. This is a video about the most famous problem in game theory. Problems of this sort pop up everywhere, from nations locked in conflict to roommates doing the dishes. Even game shows have been based around this concept. Figuring out the best strategy can mean the difference between life and death, war and peace, flourishing and the destruction of the planet. Okay, so the whole video is actually about uh, 25 minutes long, but I just cut it down to kind of go over it with you. A banker with a chest full of gold coins invites you and another player to play against each other. You each get two choices. You can cooperate or you can defect. If you both cooperate, you each get three coins. If one of you cooperates but the other defects, then the one who defected gets five coins and the other gets nothing. And if you both defect, then you each get a coin. Robert Axelrod, a political scientist, he decided to hold a... So that is describing the traditional prisoner's dilemma. Yeah, so now he's going to explain how Robert Axelrod had a tournament on the computer to see... You'll see. Computer tournament. He invited some of the world's leading game theorists from many different subjects to submit computer programs that would play each other. Axelrod called these programs strategies. The goal of the tournament was to win as many points as possible. So they made all these computer strategies um, and submitted them, and they're going to run it through the prisoner's dilemma over and over and over again. All strategies were loaded onto a single computer where they faced off against each other. So they all did prisoner's dilemma matches against each other. Uh, and it was based on the thing where if both people agree, they both get three points. And if you cooperate and your, the other person does not cooperate, then you get five and they get three. So there's a whole bunch of different variations on that. And they put the scientists together or whoever made the programs, the strategies, and they tested them to see which one would accumulate the most points in this game. All strategies were loaded onto a single computer where they faced off against each other. The crazy thing was that the simplest program ended up winning, a program that came to be called Tit for Tat. Tit for Tat starts by cooperating, and then it copies exactly what its opponent did in the last move. So it would follow cooperation with cooperation and defection with defection. But only once, if its opponent goes back to cooperating, so does Tit for Tat. Axelrod found that all the best performing strategies, including tit for tat, shared four qualities. First, they were all nice, which just means they are not the first to defect. So tit for tat is a nice strategy. It can defect, but only in retaliation. The opposite of nice is nasty. That's a strategy that defects first. Out of the 15 strategies in the tournament, eight were nice and seven nasty. The top eight strategies were all nice. Come on, look at that. The top eight, it's a clear line. All the nice ones are at the top and all the mean ones are at the bottom. And nice, I don't know who chose the word, but what it really means is all of these people would continue cooperating until the other person stopped. That's important. I mean, it's a clean sweep. If you always cooperate until the other person stops, you're gonna win even the worst performing nice strategy still far outscored the best performing nasty one. The second important quality was being forgiving. A forgiving strategy is one that can retaliate, but it doesn't hold a grudge. So tit for tat is a forgiving strategy. It retaliates when its opponent defects, but it doesn't let defections from before the last round influence its current decisions. Friedman, on the other hand, is maximally unforgiving. After the first defection, just from the opponent, would defect for the rest of the game. Okay, that's it. No mercy. And that might feel good to do, but it doesn't end up working out well in the long run. This conclusion, that it pays to be nice and forgiving, came as a shock to the experts. Many had tried to be tricky and create subtle, nasty strategies to beat their opponent and eke out an advantage. But they all failed. Instead, in this tournament, nice guys finished first. After Axelrod published his analysis of what happened, or circulated it among these game theorists, he said, now that we all know what worked well, let's try again. 
So he announced a second tournament where everything would be the same except for one change, the number of rounds per game. See, in the first tournament, each game lasted precisely 200 rounds. And that is important, because if you know when the last round is, then there's no reason to cooperate in that round, so you're better off defecting. Of course, your opponent should reason the same, and so they should also defect in the last round. But if you both anticipate defection in the last round, then there's no reason for you to cooperate in the second to last round, or the round before that, or before that, and so on all the way to the very first round. And so in Axelrod's tournament, it was a very important thing that the players didn't know exactly how long they were going to be playing. That's important. They did not know exactly how long that they were going to be playing. Um, and they, they show how in nature, like there's a brief part about the impalas who groom each other. The point of that segment is to say that in nature, when this cooperate or don't cooperate thing pops up again and again and again, it is basically for the entire lifetime of these animals because they're constantly living in this um, paradigm. On average, it would be 200 rounds, but there was a random number generator that uh, prevented them from knowing with certainty. After a thousand generations, the proportions are mostly stable. So they played it and they played it and they played it a whole bunch. And this is the results they came up with. Only nice strategies survive. Again, tit for tat comes out on top. There it is, tit for tat won basically uh, over a thousand iterations. Now this is the most important part of the video and by far every person on earth should watch this in my opinion. Imagine a world that is a really nasty place to live, more or less populated with players that always defect. Except there's a little cluster of tit-for-tat players that live in some kind of nucleus. They will start building up a lot of points, and also, because that translates into offspring, they'll start to take over the population. So, in fact, Axelrod showed that a little island of cooperation can emerge and uh, spread. Did you hear that? That is the most important thing I ever heard in my whole life. But a little island of cooperation can emerge and uh, spread. A little island of cooperation can emerge and uh, spread. And we're like, we want to be spread. We want to be spread, remember? And we were like, uh, 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 uh. And we couldn't be spread. You got to get spread. Let's just watch this last part again. They will start building up a lot of points and also, they'll start to take over the population. So, in fact, Axelrod showed that a little island of cooperation can emerge and uh, spread, and eventually will take over the world, which is fantastic. 